Alrighty, folks. Hopefully, this will be the last of my little collection of networking cable stuff. So, hopefully, you've gone through all the other videos. Hopefully, there's enough definition there for everybody to understand what is so difficult about a network cable. There's really nothing that difficult if you know what you're looking at. If you know what you want. If you need just a simple Cat5 cable to go from your computer to a switch, that's not really that difficult. And again, I don't know if anybody just caught it, but I said a Cat5. What if you're looking for a Cat3 cable? Hopefully you've already watched all that video and understand where that's wrong. Hopefully I don't have to elaborate that. Hopefully I don't get any questions on that because go ahead and watch the other video. Here's one I'm going to throw in there. What if you're looking for a Cat 4? Now everybody go, what's he talking about? They did exist. They don't anymore. You might find those out in the field somewhere. Hopefully not. That's pretty old. For a short time, there was. So, you might run across some weird stuff out there. Cat 5E is the new standard as of... Wait, strike that. Is the old standard of a standard of a new standard. Cat 5E is the latest version of Cat 5 that went to Cat 5 Enhanced to then Cat 5E. These are different generations of a cable. So I brought that up before. I want to bring it up again because you might see and I've had come across it where it tells you this is a Cat 5 cable blah 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 this is enhanced. I throw that away because what it's telling me is you have a cat5 cable that they did the enhancement to it's not a cat5 e cable there's quite a bit of difference there's quite a bit of generational differences in that it's kind of like version 1.1 1.2 1.3, 1 1.8. 1 a 1.1 is not the same as a 1.8. They're two different generational additions. There were other little tweaks in there. I believe they had like a, a plus and they had some other little things out there that, you know, some of these other makers did at some of these times before it came a true standard. So you might run across some of these things. But I wanted to point that out because if you try to Google it, you try to look it up, they're going to tell you Cat5 Enhanced is the same as Cat5e. If you get into the true technical websites and the true technical places, they're going to tell you no it's not. That was an earlier edition of that kind of cable. Where they say, oh, it'll support a gigabit. It may, it may not. And at that point, depending on how much you need and how much these cost, is it really worth it? Is it really worth running an older cable compared to running a new modern cable? My option is throw out the old bring in the newer right now I don't even really run cat 5e I prefer cat 6 and above because what happens when you move up what happens when you decide to implement something new on your network and it doesn't support this it doesn't support 
Cat 5e. Likely it won't happen, but for the cost differences and what you're doing, <coughs> oh man, it's much more worth moving up. One of the other key factors is the copper in here. Cat 6, I believe Cat 7, the copper lines are larger. So it's different than a Cat 5e. So I wanted to sum that up. I know I have lots of videos about a lot of information, ports, cable ends, cross cable, color code. There's a lot of information that comes down to this. How it's used. Where you use it. How long of a run. How long of a run do you have to make with it. How far does it have to go. How many do you connect together. What kind of cables you connect together. Is it shielded. Is it unshielded. Should you mix shielded and unshielded? No, not on the same connected line because then it does you no good to have shielded. You want it shielded all the way. Switches. You can add switches in between your cable run so that you can make the run longer. 325 feet is really the max. I would not push it more than 300 feet before you put a switch then you can add another 300 feet put a switch add another 300 feet put a switch add another 300 feet put a switch that's over 1200 foot long but when you do that you want to figure out what is the best way to do it because you have to put power you have to do these things you'll have to do some of these things that need to be done some of the weird alternatives out there is PoE. I haven't really tried this. But, you know, if you have a PoE switch and you have a PoE switch on each end that can provide power in to that other PoE switch, supposedly that switch can run off your network cable and not actually off the power. I don't know. I haven't tried it. You know, but there's stuff you can research, you can find out. Wireless. <coughs> they make wireless bridges. That'll broadcast. They make devices that hospitals, other businesses and stuff, that will broadcast out. 12 miles, 30 miles to the dish on the other side that'll pick it up, broadcast back. They make devices that can transmit far, far distances so you can have an access point here and way down somewhere else. But again, from that point down to your switch comes down to your cable. These are all little factors that come into play. I know there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of data out there. You can do research. I'm not going to show how to terminate a cable and all that because I'm sure anybody can go online and see the hundreds of other videos doing that. Might do that later on, but I have to dig out all my tools and all my stuff just to do that. When really this is about your cable as long as you know what the ends are you know what the color code is you know what the wire should kind of look like you can see how these colors are marked a lot of them are marked differently but it should follow the proper color code if you open it up and it's black and there's all these weird other colors in there I would question this cable if it's anything other than color code that you know it should be. That's one of the factors. 
is to know the proper information so that you know. It's not to know this so you can do it. Because you don't really have to make a cable. If you make a cable, there's a lot of variables in it. How are you going to make this cable? What are you going to make it and how? Where are you going to use it? How are you going to use it? Do you want the little jacket on the end? Do you want the boot that covers the connector? The snap-on? Again, this locks in so that your cable don't fall out. If those get broken, you have to redo the cable. So if you make a cable like this that has the booting, the jacket, all this stuff all covered, and this gets damaged, how much does it cost to replace it? Depending on what kind of booting you have, some of them are replaceable, some of you can you reuse, some of them you can't. Some of them slide up inside that connector and they snap in there and they just get crushed and they're no good after that point. Because you can't get it back out because you can't get the connector apart. You have to cut off the cable. Because you do that, depending on how the boot fits, if you have one that's all a boot, everything that slides up, a lot of times you can cut that cable off and slide that whole piece off and reuse it. If you have a multiple piece one, they make multiple pieces, of course, you'd have to do your homework, do your research, but this is a factor I want to bring up because this is now a cost to you because you have to buy all these components, you have to buy these pieces. One of the things I have is I have a whole box over here that has stuff in it for networking. make these in multiple multiple colors in the old days we used to have IT guys that would use white cable for one thing yellow cable for one thing blue cable for one thing and so on basically where I'm at what I've done is I don't use that I don't use different color cable because then anytime someone wants something, you got to go change it. And really, I think it looks bad. Because you have all this stuff that comes in, and it's all multicolor. I like it all one color. If there's lines that you know you're going to use on a regular basis that, okay, i got to change this from one network to another network, especially IT people. If you're jumping from one network to another network on a certain port, I have a very specific color cable and it's a patch cable that's flexible that you don't have to worry about you know if it breaks it's made to be moved so when I go into that room it stands out like that yep that's the one I need I double check the port we're good to go all the other cables don't really get moved they shouldn't get moved People aren't moving offices, they're not moving around, you know, they're all in a good spot. You know, some of the offices have multiple lines live for multiple things. So, I found this works out great. Because if you were running managed switches, you put different colors of these on your ends of your lines, you know where this goes. Oh, that's accounting. Oh, that one goes to HR. Oh, that one goes to here. <coughs> this one goes to research and development. This is main office people, like your GM, your your big honchos, your you know all your executives. Put those little boots on there. Because when they call you and say, hey, 
I don't have internet, this ain't working, blah, blah, blah. And if you know, okay, it's a gold color or it's purple, you can go in there and look right at that switch, find all those purple ones real quick. Boop, 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 And see if the link lights are off. If those link lights are off, you can track that cable back, see what's going on there. Did the managed switch turn off that port? Go log in, check out, is that switch on? Is that port on? What's going on? You can do all that real quick, just by having these. So, that's also another tip for home users. I know stores are charging a fortune for these. You can go online, buy them dirt cheap. Buy them dirt cheap. I have a whole box full. I paid so dirt cheap for it, I've got them here. They'll probably last me another 50 years. I've got so many of them. I've got thousands of them because they were so cheap. Now, I don't have thousands of them because they were so cheap. I have thousands of them because that's how much it cost to have what a small little package in the store would have been. So for about 30 of them on the store, I got over a thousand. So that's why I have them. So that's one of the things you can consider. If you're a home person, you have your network set up, you have one that goes to your Wi-Fi router, maybe you have your cable modem or whatever that runs over to your switch. You know, you could put green on one end, that's your switch that comes in, comes into your switch. Oh, well this one then goes to my Wi-Fi. Put blue on each end. So that way, if you're having a problem with your Wi-Fi, and you pick up your Wi-Fi router, and you look at the back, oh shoot, it's blue. Okay, so then you go to your router, from your router to your switch, guess what line it is? It's the blue. You might have a 25 port switch. If you're in a business, you might have 48 port switches and 10 of them stacked up. Makes it a lot easier to know what cable you're looking for. You don't have to tone anything. You don't have to test anything. You don't have to try to fit and guess. Unplug. Oh, no, 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 plug that in. No, 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 no. These will tell you really quick. So that's a tip that you can do. So I know that isn't covered in any of these other videos, but this is what I want to cover in this big in-depth video. Because all of that's all the little things for troubleshooting very particular things, like a certain kind of cable. You walk in, trying to find out what's going on. More probably for professionals, not for home users. But, again, I just brought up a big scenario where you have three devices, four devices, five devices. <coughs> you could run across a cross cable. That's why it wasn't working. You moved something. You grabbed the cable off the shelf. You went and hooked it up. And... Voila! It don't work. You have a cross cable instead of a standard cable. Something to look at. You hold up the two ends, you look at the colors. You know... It's kind of one of those things where... It's so simple, but there's so many little things that can go wrong that can bite you. It's really not that complicated. It really isn't. But the biggest problem you have is you have that cross cable and you have a standard cable. 
you can't tell the difference unless you really look at them. So that's where things can come up. Uh, color code. Really, unless you're linking two cables together, even then, you probably won't have any issues. You might have some weird fluctuations on testing and other things, but it should not affect your system. Best practice? No. You don't do that. That's not best practice. So that's one of the variables. So these are some of the things that you go over when you troubleshoot. And especially if you're a home person that you're trying to do something easy that won't cost a fortune and you have nothing but headaches. And it could be just as simple as, and you may even go out to a store because this is one of the things that really bothers me is you go out to a store and you ask them, I'm going to go from my router into my room way in the back. I need a 50 foot cable. Do you have it? Oh, let's go see. And they take you over there to the aisle and the guy stands there and goes, um, okay, now you said 50 feet. Okay, these are 50 feet. And turns around and boom, he's gone. Because he has no clue what those even are. He knows it's a network cable and he knows it's 50 feet. And leaves you there. You're stuck. You need this for what you're going to do. So even if you go and try to ask someone to get guidance they don't know. Or they tell you, oh yeah, this is what you need. They pull it off and they hand it to you. They didn't even look at what that actual package is marked. They might accidentally give you a cross cable. Because, number one, that hook or that space might be for a standard cable. But someone got lazy and just threw something there or returned it and stuck it on the shelf. And didn't actually look at the package to see if it's a standard cable if it's, you know, B rate, if it's B color code, A color code, you know, cross cable, if it's a patch cable, if it's a standard cable, there's different products there that they don't tell you. They, oh, here you go. Or they're gone. Boom. That's it. They take you to what you want and then boom. And usually when it's the boom, that means they have no clue what that product is or what's going on. It's not that difficult of a product. But it's just knowing those four or five variables that will stop the headaches. Because if you already have a 50 foot cable and you already have a coupler and you go in and you tell the guy, oh, I just need a 50 foot cable because you already have a 50 foot cable, he's going to take you to that. where you might actually want to look at a 100 foot cable. Run one standard cable. You don't have that coupler. You don't have anything to worry about. It's one standard cable. If something happens, you can test it and know it's either in the cable somewhere or in the ends. You can test it and it can show up in the middle. Is it the joiner? Is it one of the two ends? Is it the other cable? Is it, you know, there's a lot of variables there. So as for a troubleshooting variable, you can eliminate a lot of that. So that's what these videos are all about. Plus, I've seen it where people do projects. Okay, we're going to need a bunch of cables. Go out and get me like 50, 50 foot cables. That's what they do their project with. Go out and get me 50, 20 foot cables or 25 foot cables. Get me... 15 connectors to so in case I got to go longer Like really That's how you planned your project And it's funny because yeah, it can work but you run into that variable of 
where was that connector made? How old is it? How beat up did it get? How humid is it in your area? Does it rust? Does it tarnish? Does it now it's not supposed to rust because it's rust because it's a good quality. But come on. You don't know. You don't know what it's made out of. That's part of the whole scenarios. That's why if you run one solid 100 foot cable instead of two fifties, you don't have to worry about that middle link. So this is what these videos are about. I know a lot of people will think oh, this is silly, you know, we don't have to worry about it. But the first time you run into these issues, you're going to spend hours upon hours trying to figure this stuff out. You know, it, it's kind of amazing to see how some of these things were done. To see how people have done things. And you go, why would you do that? Why? You know, and I just come in and I troubleshoot some things and I tell them, you know what? I can troubleshoot it for you two or three times. After that, clean run. And they go, what do you mean? After the third time, if you're still having issues, I'm going to have to crawl up there. I'm going to have to look at everything they've done, unhook everything, check all their connectors, check everything. You know, make sure that nobody went and hung some, something up in the ceiling and a nail went through the ceiling and punched a line. You know, it could be anything. By the time I go up to do that, that's going to be two to three times as much work as me just taking my box of cable, going from one end to the other, boom, and being done. Take all that stuff out, take it down, test it, certify it, do whatever we need to do, put it on a shelf, say this is here for later if you need it. If one of those cables is bad for some reason, you say no good, throw it out, these are here for later. Because I know that solid run is really the best way to do it. Because you don't know what variables you might have. Eliminate those variables. Why have those variables? Especially if you're running it through a building that has a hard ceilings with partial access and you have to fish it through and do all kinds of stuff to get it through and then you have a coupler in a hard ceiling area. You don't know what happens. There might be a water leak, there could be anything that affects that coupler and those connections. And then what do you got to do? You got to go all the way down to that end, unhook it, and back feed all of that line until you find that coupler and have enough line hanging out on this side so that once you fix it or whatever you're going to do, test, test it, check it, and pull it all back through and make sure you don't tangle it up and make a big mess. So, as a homeowner, small business, big business, I'm sure you've heard what a headache that would be. A lot of work that would be to do this. So, these are some of the variables. I keep saying it's an easy thing, but it's a hard thing. If you have a shielded cable and you run that sucker all the way and it's shielded, you have no adapters, no connectors or anything in it, that's a good line. Run it down your wall, put the keystone jack on there with the faceplate, put it in, boom. Nobody fiddles with it, nobody touches it, everything's great. You test it, the ground works, everything works, everything's great. That's great, that line should last you pretty much forever unless somebody puts a nail through it or screws into it or something else. So, you know, those are the variables you want to figure out. Number one, number two thing to all of that when you run cables, pulling this cable with that kind of end on it can be a little bit of a challenge. Pulling a cable that has this on there usually goes right through whatever you need it to go through. I know this don't look like much, but that might as well be a ship anchor. 
This sucker will get stuck on everything. Everything. So, that's one of the things to consider too if you're running cables. You might want to actually make your own cable. Because that's a lot smoother, that'll feed right through. Drop it down the way you need to, come back, terminate it, and you're good to go. Not to mention, those keystone jacks that go in the wall. What are you going to do when you get to the wall with this? I brought that up before. There's the keystone jack you can actually plug that into, and it has the same port on the other side to plug a line into. That means you have to go buy that certain kind of keystone jack. Instead of the standard keystone jack where you punch it down. Either one could technically work, but this line, you have all of this. Make sure you have enough space in the wall. It's going to get tight. Don't want to pinch your line, break your line. Usually this goes right in and you can bend up and you're good to go. All these little things. A lot of little, little things. Especially if you want two or three lines in a box. You're going to run out of space pretty quick. So, or you can just run it out the wall and, you know, looks a little cheesy. But there's other ones where they come down at an angle so you can plug your line in and it comes down off the wall so you have more space to slide back your items instead of having the item so far off the wall there's a lot of little variables so go ahead and do your homework um, I hope this really does explain a lot of networking cable went over the color code went over your patch cable in, summary in here what else was there you have again the flexible patch cable and you have your standard run horizontal vertical type of run cable patch cable has the serrated wires inside the multiple copper instead of one solid piece of copper that's another factor when you make your own cables in the old days they used to make connectors that were for one or the other or both and of course the ones that worked on both were a lot more expensive nowadays most of these connectors they figured out when it punches in how to punch it down the pin in the middle of the wiring so it doesn't matter if it's solid or stranded cable you can use the same connectors but that's one thing you want to always look at when you buy your connector is what kind of wire does it support same with electrical you have the different kinds of wire solid or not solid so I wanted to bring that up with your connectors Keystone jacks. One of the main factors why, when I also brought up in the other video, patch cable is not really made to be run through the walls because it is not solid cable. Solid cable is better for the keystone jack. Because when you terminate the keystone jack, there's two little serrated edges that cut into the sheathing and rub up against the copper inside. I'm sure you can probably do it with the other line. It's probably going to be a little bit more of a task you might have to work on it a little to make sure it has good connection. So that's another variable I know I've done it on patch cable I haven't had any problems where but 
those are repair work because somebody cut it somebody did something and they just wanted it patched and repaired the line was long enough they had extra in the ceiling <coughs> so the patch was done most of the time I would terminate both ends put the connector on there plug it together only reason why I do it that way instead of the other way with the keystone jack is, is that wire has already been broken once why so if by some chance they break that wire here and then they go up and break it right here and you have enough slack you can just move that to the new point and reconnect it never been called back for a second break so is that the best practice I don't know but that's the procedure I've always done so I mean those are considerations best practice probably would be run yourself a new line take that one out bite the bullet bite the costs whatever you want to call it replace it upgrade if you have a cat 5e line might as well take that chance and put a cat 6 in so those are some of the variables to think about you know why you do this work and how you do it is very strange and particular like I just mentioned broken line you repaired it why not upgrade it I threw out cat 6 right as an option one of the big options too is okay that line's running through your ceiling how far is it running what's it running over what's running around it I mentioned cat 6 you could stay with the cat 6 or maybe you bump it up cat 7 Maybe you do a half bump, cat six shielded. Depending on where you're running that line and how long, it might be worth investing a little bit more and going for shielded. If you're running that in the house or something and you're running it from your router all the way to a back room into a computer, you might want to consider running shielded. Why not? Do your homework, do your research, find out what costs are, find out. Because if you're going to buy what you need to do the Cat 6, you're going to buy the tools, you're going to buy what you need, buy a pre-done cable. Especially if you're buying a pre-done cable. And you're going to do that effort of Mr. Snagzilla. If it's an easy run where you're not going to have a lot of snags, you might want to consider upgrading to shielding. Go watch that video. You know, this is all networking. This is all simple network cable. That ain't so simple. There's so many variables out there. So many. I know most people nowadays think this is silly to spend all the time, money, and effort into this. I'm going to go for Wi Fi. It's easy. Yeah, it is easy. Easy for a lot of things. Easy for breaches. Easy for attacks. Easy for people to get on. Easy for people to steal your info. Go watch all those videos. So, you have a whole security aspect on that. So, there is no real easy answer. There's a lot of easy questions, a lot of easy information, but it's up to you to choose what would be best and what you can afford. If you really, really can't afford 
to go to a hiring table, I understand. You probably really don't need to. But if I'm going to spend the effort and I'm going to spend the hour or two hours doing something, why not me do the best? TV cable. RJ59. RJ6. RJ7. If you know anything about TV cable, single shield, double shield, quad shield. Which one would you pick? Why? Same thing. Hopefully you didn't say RJ59. Hopefully everybody's running RJ6. Much better cable. What I'm running? RJ6 Quad Shield. Why not? Why not go for the best? Seven is for backbone resident for corporation type other things. I think there's an 11 too. Big old monster cable. Why, you know, why not? Why not go for the quad shield? I bought the tools, I bought the ends, I did everything, ran the cable, terminated, hooked them up. Why not? Better cable than the cable company would give you, better cable than the satellite companies would give you. So, why not? Why not go for it? So, same thing, network cable. Why not go for the best? Connectors, joiners, wall jacks, face plates. Look at them. There's a million variables. White, tan. I think they even have black. They have all kinds of colors. Keystone jacks come in all kinds of colors. Blue, red, yellow. I mean, you, you might have yellow walls. You might want a yellow faceplate and a yellow keystone jack. So it all blends in. Black. Maybe you have a black wall. You can personalize that stuff that way. So these are variables that are out there. Is there a difference between a white, tan, black, yellow keystone jack? No. You buy a good brand? No, it's the same thing, just different color. So these are some of these variables that are out there. And this is all just running a network cable. You can actually buy different color cables. You don't have to have white, you don't have to have black, you can have green, you can have blue. Where I talked about those connectors. You don't even have to buy those connectors if you want. You can actually literally buy cables that are red, yellow, blue, green, the entire cable. That also helps to know what cable goes to where when you look at your device. You look at your printer. It's got a blue cable on it. You go to your switch, there's only one blue cable. Well, you know it's not the orange one. You know it's not the red one because you saw it's blue on there. So it's the blue one. So there's all these variables out there but it's all network cable it's all how you want to do your network it's all on how you want to make your life easier so that is an option it may be something you want to look at <coughs> you can even do that in a business like I said, a lot of businesses do that. Their accounting network, their lines are certain colors, and there's different colors for the marketing, and there's different colors for this. And 
from the server room, there's a certain color lines coming in for input, certain color going out for outputs. But I don't like that because it gives you that rainbow effect. I like having the same colors. But of course, you're going to end up with some mixed color in there. You might end up with white lines and then the next batch of lines you come in might be blue. That's fine. I don't mind that. But the ones that are coming in from all the wall outlets and all the other places, I think look bad that way when they come in all these different colors. And I know if you go online, you can research it, you can look at it. It does kind of look nice if you can run them all in and you have all your orange lines, all your blue lines, all your yellow lines, and all these things all kind of separated. But in actuality, unless you spend a lot, a lot, a lot of hours doing that, they're all going to get merged and mixed in and because all those lines come through the ceiling, they come around and they, and they all come in and pretty, you know, unless you run them and you know how they're going to be in the building the development of it. And then what if a county decides to move from one section of the building to the middle section of the building? then the lines don't match anymore. So, that's really one of the things to consider. Research department, they eliminate it. And they give it to another department. They make accounting bigger. Yeah, okay, those two colors could go for accounting and all of that. But, these are just small little factors, some little things to think about that you know, when you're building a brand new building and you could spend the millions of dollars and you can design these little type of things, you can. When you're at home, those are things that probably most people don't know about. Probably wouldn't even think about. Well, I need a cable, you run up to the store, whatever you have, or electronic store, whatever, you buy whatever's on stock, whatever you can get. I know a lot of big stores that I used to go to when I started out don't exist anymore and they used to you used to go in and they're going to the network cables there would be this huge section just a huge section you know bigger than my desk of network cables they had the red ones the yellow ones the blue ones the green ones and all the different links and you walk over there like oh my goodness like and then a lot of people didn't understand it. Why would you do that? Why would you want all of this? Just buy the white ones because they match your wall and you don't see them as well. And okay, yeah, that's a valid excuse. Valid reason. I've already given you guys plenty of other examples of why using a colored cable would help. So, these are all factors you can take in advance. I hope I've covered everything. I don't think there's very much I've left out. Of course, there's all the other videos. Go back and watch those. There's a lot of information there. There's a lot of information in here that probably isn't in there because this is a total rundown of as simple as plugging in a network cable. It really isn't that simple. So, it's the funniest thing because watch these videos online. Oh, it's just so simple. You just plug this into here and plug that into there and everything's working and blah, 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 blah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Again, they don't tell you all the facts. They don't tell you all the information. So, for me to even just to go through a simple thing as a network cable and have to do seven videos to explain the differences between these network cables. I haven't even got into the legacy technology. Token rings, star networks, all these other things that aren't there anymore. That 
you might actually come across. I know I have. I've gone into some places. That, what is all this over here on the side? Oh, that was from our old network. Your old network? What did you have? Oh, we had the token ring. Why do you still have that stuff? Oh, we might need it. Throw it away. <laughs> Why would you want to use 20 year old cables and old technology? Go out buy the new stuff. Had someone I knew that went into a place, they still had all the Star Network stuff. Throw it away. Start over. Get the new fresh stuff. There's no point. I'm sure probably it could be salvaged, but it's all going to be Cat 5 and lower. It's not going to be any of this newer stuff. The newer stuff get small improvements, get small updates. On these cables, there's actually writing on these cables. I know I didn't go through that. But, when you go through the standards, it will tell you a lot of information about this cable. Let me see what this one actually is. This is a POT Cat 5E Verified to TIA EIA Standard B6. Oh, strike that. It is a 568 B2. I believe there's a. C, I know there's a C. I don't know if there's an A rated, and I believe there's a 1, 2, and 3 after that. And usually on here it tells you this is a 24 AWG. And on here, when you pull it, it'll tell you a foot mark and usually how much is left in a box if you have a box. These are important readings when you get into business stuff. Um, like I believe the business grade cable is a class C instead of B. And they have reasons and you'll have to do the research to find out what all the different variables are because it changes. If it's a C.1, a C.2, and I believe there's a C.3, all of those ratings are different on how this is certified so there's a whole nother variable in cabling right there if it's a plenum rated if it's a riser cable all of those type of things will be listed on your cable i know there's some at one time that were actually marked as a cross cable they were made, manufactured for cross cables. So they had their own cable and it was all rated for a cross. <coughs> to me, I don't think there was any difference between this cable and a cross cable, except for the ends. Because <coughs> I know I've seen them. I've seen them marked that way. And I went, huh, interesting. But the ones I seen were Cat 5 cables, and I went, huh, interesting, Cat 5. <laughs> In the trash. As far as I went. Because there was no reason for me to proceed because it wasn't Cat 5E. So that was old legacy stuff that I saw, I found. And I chucked it because it doesn't do me any good because I want cat six and above. So these are some of these variables that you'll come across. You'll run into some of this old cable. 
Some of these businesses are funny. Go hang on to this stuff and use it. Oh, it's working fine. Well, why are you getting 10 mag instead of 100? Because <laughs> they're running that funky cable. So, you know, that's some of the variables out there. You know, you'll run across this stuff. If you're a home user and you go out to a thrift store, or you go out to some place and you come across some of this stuff, <coughs> look at it. Make sure it's actually what you think it is. Make sure it's a good rated cable. Not some token ring or some old cable that someone just, oh, I'll just donate this and went to a charity and the charity has no clue. They mark it as a quarter and put it out on the shelf because they're going to make a quarter on it and you buy it. <laughs> It's some old obsolete cable. Yeah, you didn't pay that much for it. Yeah, I would buy it because I would want to come home and play with it and test it and, you know, do all that kind of stuff just to have fun with it. If you're interested in that type of stuff, yeah, you know, it's worth it. But then at least you know what, the, what it is you're working on, what you're playing with. Maybe you're interested in getting into the computer field. Maybe you're interested in designing, designing and making network cables. Maybe you have a great invention for a cable. Maybe there's something out there that is completely obvious that's wrong with this cable that you know you can fix and make this cable much better. You know, that's why there's different ratings on them. Because somebody has obviously figured out, I can make this cable better by doing this. Or changing that, or doing this, or changing the twist, or stretching it out, or do, doing something a little different that causes a different rating. So, this is part of the factors I wanted to bring up. It's not so cut and dry. If you're a home user and you're not using any high bandwidths and you've got 100 meg speed, here's the problem that I've been seeing. And I've brought this question up, nobody really brought it, answered me on YouTube, Facebook, or anything, is what speed is your internet? I go on these trips to San Diego for a vacation, and I'm seeing these ads. Sign up for our fiber optic connection, or sign up for our cable connection. You get 300 meg, 500 meg minimum internet speed. Where I'm at, the standard is 100 for the company I have, and you can upgrade. Well, it gets really expensive upgrades. There's other companies out here that aren't even maybe a tenth of that, of speed. So, it's funny when I go out and we go places and you see these places and they're five, six, eight times the speed of what we have and it, it makes you kind of go okay wait a minute 100 meg yeah 10 100 yeah that's you know cat 5 rated but yeah now everybody's got should be on cat 5e all the old standard of cat 5 should be gone you should be running a gigabit speed so 300 meg, 500 meg, still under gigabit, you're fine with Cat 5e. Go to Cat 6, you have that extra buffer. What's the next leak? When that internet speed keeps picking up, picking up, picking up, picking up, picking up, pretty soon, gigabit might not be fast enough. You might be at 1300 speed or faster, you know, 2 gig internet here in 10 years, 5 years from now. Who knows? I doubt it's going to go that high. But if the demand's there and everybody keeps online and keeps the, the streaming and all these other services pick up, that internet speed might pick up. You might need faster. Then you need better switches. That could support those speeds. So, this is why this cabling thing is kind of an important thing to keep an eye on. 
things. Depending on what areas of the country you're in and what kind of connections you have, like I said, I can upgrade my internet speed. I think I can get a gig internet speed, but it's a fortune to do it. Yeah, my computer can support it. My graphics or my network card can support it. My Wi-Fi can support it. All these things can support it. My network can support it. My switch cannot. Now, let me think. My switch might be able to support it. I would have to look at the speeds. Because Yes, it can. I have gigabit switch. Because I have the overhead, just in case. Because in case I want two computers to communicate, I don't want them to slow down. So that's your other variable. What are you doing inside your network? You have a data server. You have anything of that sort, that communication will be faster in Ernal until you go out. So knowing how a network set up, how all that stuff structured will help your choices on this. It really doesn't hurt to do a lot of research to figure out what you want, what you need, but understanding the difference between what kind of cables there are are huge. They can be really huge. And it can be confusing. So I know this has gone on for at least an hour. I hope this will sum up enough along with all of those other videos so that you understand truly what's involved. Because I know a lot of people right now are going, yeah, they're right, man. I'm just going to go get Wi-Fi. Go watch all my Wi-Fi videos. What kind of Wi-Fi are you going to get? You're going to get the A, you're going to get B, you're going to get C, you're going to get AX, get Generation X, get, you know, Wi-Fi 6. What are you going to get? You're going to get Mesh? Guess what? You got a lot of answers there, too. And you better know what you're doing. Because if you run out and you buy the wrong Wi-Fi at the wrong speeds and the wrong connection speeds and your device does not support the new generation 6, you're spending a lot of money on something that this thing can't handle, that won't communicate too right. It's going to default down. It's going to compensate. So... Go back, watch those videos. That's what's so important about this because I know a lot of people gave up on this because they thought, oh, you know, it's too much work, it's too much hassle, I'm just going to go buy Wi Fi. Look at all the generational jumps and leaps and stuff that Wi Fi's done to get up to a decent speed. So now getting up to a decent speed. But this can get up to a killer speeds. If you have the right equipment and you spend the right amount on switches, you can get 10 gig connections. 50 gig connections, I believe, is what it's up to now. Yeah, those switches and stuff are gonna cost you a lot of money. But if you need that kind of speed, the only way to do it it's through copper. Unless you're doing fiber optic or some other kind of other line. So, this is why, even though it's legacy and it's old technology, this stuff can be, it's still up to date. It's still important today. And that's why I'm doing all these videos. So that everybody truly does understand what's involved. It's not as simple as just, I'll grab this from the store and plug it in. I mean, you could. Hopefully you've 
got a 50-50 shot of getting the right time, putting it in, and it working. But to what levels? To what kind of performance? If you're a gamer and you're doing some hardcore stuff, you might want to really research this. If you're a home user, going on the internet, just fooling around. If you're streaming, big time now, streaming, working from home, having to do conferences, having to do webinars, this might help you. If you're having weird issues at home with your business stuff, this might help you. Because this is not your IT guy coming into your home, making sure you have all the proper stuff. This is now you managing your computer, your work computer, how you're connected to the internet and connected to their network. Might involve something like this or it might involve a wireless upgrade. So, that's one of the factors I wanted to bring up. And if it's as simple as you already have a switch and you already have your Wi-Fi stuff and you have all of that and you're too slow and you're working in a room and you're working in your kitchen or you're working in a bedroom right off of that, you can go out and buy a 100-foot cable, plug it into that switch, just run it on the floor or into that room, plug it into that computer while you do your work. You know, four hours, five hours a day, whatever, eight hours a day. When you're done, take that cable, roll it back up, put it up, out of the way. And it's out of your way. A little studio apartment. Something of that sort. If you can't really run it around the walls and stuff. Maybe you have doors and stuff in the way. And it looks shoddy. You know you just roll it out. Roll it back up. Again. That also comes down to what kind of cable you buy. Solid. Or the patch cable with the serrated wires. Because how much are you going to be moving it? Those are options. I know, real simple, right? But you have that information because last thing you want to do is pull that cable out, hook it up, and you're supposed to work, and it's not working. Because you moved it so much and you bought the wrong cable, it broke. You pinched it when you rolled it up. So those are the variables. I really hope this really helps a lot of people. Because I know this is one of the big, big things that, you know, I've run across. And you talk to businesses and they go, well, we know that. We just change it out. Well, if you would buy the other kind of cable, it wouldn't break as much. And they go, what other kind of cable? And you explain all that to them. You taught it. Oh, man, nobody ever told me about that. So that can resolve a lot of issues just because people really don't know. Home users probably don't really know what kind of cable they got. Hopefully most home users when they've gone out and bought the cable, it's going to be a patch cable. Most stores that's probably what they will sell you is a patch cable because it's pre-made and it's designed to be moved. This one doesn't even really feel like a patch, it's pretty stuff tough moving but you know those are the things you want to look at to figure out what kind of cable it is when you buy it so that way you know hopefully it prevents you from having headaches in the future so I know I've gone on really really long but this is the full breakdown of this this is really to make sure everybody understands how complex a simple thing is. Once you understand this, it's really not that hard to go out and do this stuff. Then you can go on there and watch how you make your cables, how you terminate them, and all this other stuff. You'll know the difference. They'll tell you the difference between the Cat 6 connector I've already gone over cat 5 connectors different gauges and wires all these things I've mentioned 
So these are some of the factors you want to look at. Some of these cables out there nowadays, some of these shielded ones, actually are a different kind of RJ45 jack. Some of them have little plastic pieces in there that hold the lines. Some of them, when the lines come through, one comes up, one goes underneath, and one comes on top. So they're a little harder to crimp, a little harder to line your lines up. There's a lot of little variables out there. When you get interested in it and you get more in depth and you want to do it as a professional level, well, there's lots of videos out there that will show you how to custom make your cables, do it professionally, use your boots, use your colors, you know, whatever you want to do. It's up to you. You can go out and buy thousand foot rolls and you can buy them in eight, ten different colors if you want. You can make them, you can sell them, you can do whatever you want, however you want. You can help your friends out, make colors, you know, whatever you want. So these are some of the variables out there when it comes to these little simple things like a cable. Simple little network cable. Seven videos. So go back and watch them. Hopefully everybody enjoys it. Leave your comment. Hit the bell. Subscribe. Come on. Got to get the subscriptions up. Hopefully everybody will like this content. Because the last group of content I did does not seem like too many people are interested. But this goes back to switches, hubs, routers, all your general hardware. Knowing the difference, go back watch those videos. Knowing the differences, what those are, and how you connect those is now this. Alrighty, I want to thank you all for watching. I'm going to totally wrap this one up, end out this segment, and hopefully I'll start my next video series after this. But for the seven of these, I hope everybody enjoys it, covers enough categories. If you're stuck on something, go back, rewatch those little segments. Or you can watch the first one that's a little longer that goes through some. And then you got this big one at the end. But that should break everything down for you. That's the point. Break it down. Make sure you understand. So when you go to a store or you go and ask someone about this, you know. Because that's the difference. You have a good internet connection, have good Wi-Fi connection, and it's slow, it could be as simple as that. Alrighty, thank you.